it surprised me. <laughs> the countdown not alert you. <laughs> no, I was asleep. Um, thank you guys for joining. Make sure you guys smash that like button. It helps us out a tremendous amount. If you haven't already, subscribe to the yep. channel and hit that notification bell because we're here live twice a week right now. Yes, indeed. Um, and you don't want to miss out. Today is an awesome show because we are uh, we're talking about aquascaping, Big Reef Aquarium. I know everyone's been waiting to see some rock go into the Reef LX 320.7. The time has finally come. Yes. It's a beast. Oh, man. I had to hang from the ceiling. <laughs> Not really. Had but... to Mission Impossible on it. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> uh, so you get to see that whole process. going to help you pick, you know, deciding on picking out sand and rock, all that good stuff. But first, we've got to talk about the giveaway that goes along yes. with us. So as many of you guys might already know, we are giving away a Reef LX at the end of this series, and you have a chance to win that. The way that you do that is you head over to waterboxaquariums.com forward slash huge, fill out some information, follow us on Instagram, subscribe YouTube, buy some merch, um, and also watch every week to get the bonus entry code that we will mm -hmm. give you at some point today. That will get you 10 extra entries, which increases your chances of winning. Yep. And you can see all the episodes if you've missed any or you just want to go back and check out the information because we are teaching you step by step how to set up a large reef aquarium. Mm -hmm. um, and really what we're showing you can apply to any size aquarium, yeah. uh, the fundamentals of it. And we also have a $100 gift card we that's do. going to be given away to someone Today. who is live in here. And requirements for that, engage in the comments, ask questions, answer people, you know, just get involved and hit that like button. Yep. And then we'll pick that later. So stay tuned on those. But first, I would say, you I mean, you kind of have to start thinking about, like, what rock or what type of sand you want to use mm -hmm. in your aquarium uh, before you can get any further of aquascaping and stuff. And there's a lot of options out there. Probably can be pretty confusing of which to go with. So we've yeah. kind of set up, like, a slide to, you know, show you some of your options, pros and cons of those different things. Alrighty. The battery's so. getting low on the laptop. Anyways. All right, we're going to um, breeze through this before the battery <laughs> dies. Um. Yeah. yeah, so let's let's jump into it, Ken. Okay. Uh, so, again, choosing your, your sand and rock for your aquarium. We make it pretty easy for you guys. Mm -hmm. We do the homework. We've been doing this a long time. So Opinions may vary, but this is ours. This is how I've been doing it for an extremely long time. Um, so this is kind of just a good guide to do. Yeah. So... Considerations when you're choosing sand, live or dry sand, it is the question. So you've got some you know, pros and cons of each for live sand. Obviously the pros is you've got bacteria in there that's gonna help establish your aquarium faster and be mm -hmm. more stable. You don't have to rinse live sand and you also have a lot of choices as far as the kind of colors and also grain size. Now the cons is it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than dry sand because uh, you are paying for that bacteria and all of that. Yep. And when you put it in, your water will be a bit cloudy, 24 to 48 hours, depending on how you add your water and how much you mix it up. So there you go for your live sand, for dry sand. Um, pros, it's gonna cost less. So if you're on a, I mean, not by much, but it is, I guess, more budget friendly to do dry sand and the, um, if you rinse it really well, it's not really gonna cloud your water. So the cons is you got no bacteria with it. It's gonna do absolutely nothing for helping to establish your aquarium. And then in order to rinse it so it doesn't cloud your water, you're talking a very intensive process, adding small amounts to a bucket, rinsing it until it runs clear and doing that over and over and over and over again. Um, and then you do tend to have maybe less options available in a dry sand form. Yeah. Live sand typically for me is the way to go. Yeah, I always prefer live sand, but you know, there are some reasons that people pick dry and um, that might be some of them. So grain size, people look at them and you've got fine stuff, you've got chunky sand, you know, does it really matter? So it does, too fine of a grain uh, sand, like there's sugar, aragonite, which is super, super small. Um, and they measure by millimeter, so you can kind of look at them and see by millimeter size your grain is if it's too much like a sugar sized is it's going to constantly get suspended into your water column you're going to always have particles floating around your power heads and return flow are going to cause it to like uh like divot in there it's going to stay kicked up it won't stay as um flat on your bottom if you go too large of a grain size crushed coral or something similar the large grain size is going to allow a lot of debris and waste to go into the sand bed and it's also not going to allow inverts to actually go through it, sift it, clean it, 
and any like bottom dwelling gobies or other fish are gonna possibly have their belly scratched up and can get bacterial infections um, for things that are too big or too sharp. So, um, you know, you definitely have to consider what you want in there and what you're going to do with it. What is it? Ooh. And next, okay. So our preferred sand choices, all live, is our first choice is Carib Sea Fiji Pink. You're gonna see this in almost every single build that we do. It's got a nice variation of grain size from mm -hmm. 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters. So it's a mix of some small stuff, but a little bit of texture in there. Second choice is the Carib Sea Bahama Oolite. This is closer to a sugar size, but not that fine. Um, and it's a really nice, clean, smooth looking sand, but you don't want that in a super high flow aquarium because yeah. it is still going to have um, a small particulate size. Third choice, if you want to go something a little bit chunkier, is going to be your Carib Sea Special Grade Reef. Um, so, you know, stay away from anything super, super chunky, and it's really going to cause a lot more dirt in your system. Cool. So, our consideration for rock, you guys. Um, we went with the Carib Seed Life Rock. We've partnered with them for most of our builds. The pros, again, with using Life Rock is it's infused with bacteria, so you get that, that shorter cycle period. There's no pests or nuisance algae. That's a big thing when considering rock. That's one reason we love this, because it doesn't nothing rides along with it. It doesn't come from the ocean, so we're not impacting the reefs or pulling anything out of the water. Again, big deal. Um, comes in shades you would not usually find, and in, one of my favorite things is it's already colored to look like live rock. So it looks like live rock that uh, we're losing our laptop, Keenan. No! Yeah. Technical so. difficulties, always. Yeah. Always on them. So we're going to come right back to that shortly. <laughs> so, but again, the, the color is mm -hmm. a big deal. The Typically, like if you get a dry rock that doesn't have any color to it, it's going to take a year it is. or more to get nice stuff. color on it. Um, whereas the carob sea comes right out of the gate. Yeah, so the, the con that I put on there is that it comes in box sizes. I mean, you know, you have, they come in packages yeah. in 20, 40 pound bottles. Now, I'm sure probably at your local fish store, you can probably find individual pieces. But as a general like rule, like they're coming in packages yeah. for the most part. So, yeah. um, Let's go to the video for the rock. Okay. Okay, so while we get this all running, uh, so we went through and um, showed the different types of rock from Carib Sea and also, you know, things to consider when aquascaping. Yep, so we've got a video for that. What is it, eight minutes roughly? So we'll be back after that. Check this out, it's a great video. Episode six, a guide to large reef aquariums. We are adding sand and aquascaping the Reef LX 320.7. We love using Carib Sea Life Rock because of its natural shapes and color, and it also is infused with bacteria from the RagAlive technology, which reduces your cycling time. We offer Carib Sea Life Rock bundles, and it can come with four different varieties. Shapes comes in 20 pound boxes. It includes two arches, one donut, and one cave. This is the perfect all-in-one box for smaller aquariums. Arches comes in a 20 pound box and includes four 12 inch arches. Adding arches to your aquascaping is really helpful to provide more swimming space for fish and also give a more open appearance. Original comes in 20 and 40 pound boxes and these pieces are great for the base of your aquarium as they're gonna be a little bit bulkier and they're gonna help you create some height into your aquascaping. Shelf comes in 40 pound boxes. These are going to be all relatively flat pieces, and depending on what size, gonna be completely flat or give you some kind of texture. These are great for creating platforms, overhangs, and provide good surface area for coral growth. Due to the size of the Reef LX320.7, we're choosing to use two optional pieces. We have the 24 inch extra large and 36 inch mega arch. These arches are the perfect size for aquascaping a large aquarium. To make it easier on you, we've created custom life rock bundles for all of our water box models to give you the best mix of rock for a beautiful aquascape. For more information, check out waterboxaquariums.com. 
So now it's time to start aquascaping. One of the first things you want to do that's going to help is to actually find um, a spot that's similar to the space inside the aquarium that you're going to be using. So it's going to be a little bit smaller than the actual inside of the aquarium. We're actually using the top of an aquarium crate. This is a great reuse for yours. You can also use table, cardboard, tape on the floor, anything that works just to give you a working area so you know how it's going to fit into the aquarium. All right, so my first step to get started is I laid out some of my larger pieces that I'm gonna use for my foundation. You always wanna put your biggest pieces towards the bottom as it's gonna give you a good stable structure to build upon. So I have them all laid out here. I'm gonna kinda just start putting them into place, working with their placement. Don't be afraid to change it over and over again because what you start with is probably not how it's gonna end up. But with your bigger pieces, you're looking to give yourself some height and then also um, building up whatever shape you're going for for your rock. All right, so I've decided to kind of focus on the right side of the aquarium first, build that up to my desired shape, then I'll move over to the left. So what I did is use some of the um, like caves, shelf, and original rock to build our bases, and then put the 24 inch arch over here, and I'm trying to build around it so it blends in and looks natural. I'm making sure to keep an eye on how wide I'm allowing the rock to be. I wanna make it so that I don't have any rock touching the glass, or at least very minimal. The point of this is it's gonna make easier cleaning for your back walls, and it's also gonna provide a lot more swimming space for your fish, and allow you to get better flow behind than under the rocks. All right, so after about 100 different changes, moving of the rocks and all that, come pretty close to how I want the left side to be. Um, I incorporated the big 36 inch arch, kind of trying to blend it in so it doesn't look like one giant arch just sitting there. So here's some things to kind of look for, because every aquarium's gonna be different, it depends on what rock you have. But the main things you wanna have going on with your aquascape to make it look the best and also be most functional is one, a ton of surface area for corals to be onto. You need those flat surfaces, not everything vertical. So all those flat spots and different levels are gonna give you less space to put coral. Now, I can't forget about the fish. They need lots of swimming space, nice and open. So in ours, we have a lot of caves and swim through areas. There's a complete pass to the middle of these two. And you wanna make sure, especially if you're gonna have a bigger tank and you have tangs, angels, things like that, they do need a lot of spots to move around in. Also made it to where you're gonna be able to kind of always see where your fish are. They'll have plenty of places to hide and swim, but they're never gonna be behind a big old, you know, block of rock. So we want to avoid that really big bulky um, wall of rock and kind of go with a more open scaping. Now that the aquascape is done, it's time for us to move it into the LX320.7. First thing I'm going to do in the right side is take each layer off and place it kind of in the order that it would build. So then I would be able to take the base, put it in, take your next layer and build up to try and make it as close to what we replicated here. Then I'll do the same thing with the left side. Once all the rock is in place and in desired position, we'll go ahead and add the sand.
Okay, we have the rock in the aquarium. Now it's time to add sand. For the LX320.7, you're looking at anywhere from 10 to 16 pounds. Uh, these are 20 pound bags, just depending on how deep you want your sand bed. With the rock already in, what we're going to do is pour this into piles in the open areas and then smooth it into um, the back area, under caves, under the rock. You want to make sure it's evenly distributed throughout the aquarium. We have shown you how to pick out your rock, aquascaping, putting it into the aquarium, and adding sand. Your next step is adding water. All right, there so there you have, you have it. it. All right, all right. Let's Another just get, masterpiece. Let's just get right to this. I see <laughs> the comments um, of why I added sand after rock because I am a fan and I always add sand first. But honestly, I didn't want to crawl around in wet sand. Yeah. That's all there was yeah, to it. Yeah, because we knew um, that she was going to have to get in the tank physically. Yeah, it was going to be in the tank, like kneeling down, doing all this stuff. And the last thing I really want to do is be covered in sand or, uh, you know, all that stuff. So I decided on this one. We'll put it at the end because they're very heavy pieces to lift in to then put the sand in. But I am still pro putting sand first because when we're adding the sand second, I was like, this is why I do it first. And <laughs> um, I prefer it. So I got to call yeah, you all little up. A so. little bit of a challenge to do it with this one. Yes. Um, and when that, you're getting physically in the tank, it changes it a little bit. So. Yeah, and that big arch that's on the left side took three of us to get it in there. So we didn't. Sh I don't think we showed us actually putting it in. No, because uh, Keenan, who yeah, uses his whole camera, had to come and help with that to lift it up and over yeah. and into the um, aquarium. So that was definitely a beast of a day. Yeah, doing I, all that. I do want to mention that the rocks. So we have these pre-built bundles for our aquariums, mm -hmm. right? And we we modified the bundle because we wanted to use these two mega arches that yeah. they make in the Life Rock. They are available on the website separately, a la carte. So we did a little bit of a modified version. There's shelf, there's original, there's the mega arch, two mega arches, the 24 inch and the 36. Mm -hmm. So we, we used the base of what we have for our um, rock bundles for the 320.7, but basically it was like one less box of shelf, one less box of original, and mm -hmm. replaced it with a 36 and 24 inch arch. Um, and that's a great thing. Like the bundles are meant for a very simple, easy way to scape, it's more economical. These arches are extremely expensive, so they're not for everybody. Um, so we basically took our base bundle, kind of adjusted it, and added the arches to it, which you can definitely do and build your own as well. Yeah, so for this sure. It's not the exact um, rock kit that we do for it, but um, those are some two major arches. So if they I want to go something really open, we're gonna have you know tanks and stuff in there, and I like the look of it. So I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. Um, what's really cool, about how open you were able to make it is that's what's cool about the life rock is you can make it open but there's still so much real estate yeah. to put corals on yes so and lots of space for the fish to swim um, and i think we have your battery charged up enough yes we we had to cut over the video to get the get our presentation back up but we're going to jump right back into the slide here and we're talking about we we're talking about the considerations for rock we talked about carib sea life rock the next thing to consider is live rock. So um, the pros is that it's natural. You know, there's a lot of beneficial microorganisms in it. If cured, you know, the beneficial bacteria results in a very short cycling period. But in my opinion, these days with life rock, the cons kind of outweigh that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's lots of pests that come in, inverts, nuisance algae. There's a lot of junk in there that you typically can avoid, especially with using something like life rock. If it's not properly cured, that's a big thing with live rock. You can have big die-offs, make your aquarium real nasty, mm -hmm. make it take even longer to be able to put fish and corals yep. in. Um, it's also removed from the ocean. So again, we're trying to show you guys sustainable ways, better ways to keep an aquarium. Um, and usually the shapes, this is for me the worst thing about live rock, <laughs> 
is you're gonna buy, unless you can go hand pick it from a store, that's kind of rare these days, you're gonna just, you're gonna get a box of you have no idea what, because it's all wild, comes out of the ocean, you don't know what's gonna be in that box. It's a 50 pound box of stuff, you just don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, even if you have it at the local fish store though, um, Life Rock and Life Live Rock in general, a lot of collection areas that used to have very intricate um, shapes um, have been banned right. because it is so impactful for the reef. So you don't have as many. You have a lot of like Fiji Rock and stuff that just tend to be larger chunks or boulders, not as much mm -hmm. shape. Um, sometimes you do get lucky and find other collection areas that have um, some cool shapes to them, but it's much harder. Yeah, and I'm not going to say you couldn't do escape like Jess did here, at least somewhat similar, mm -hmm. but it would take you probably weeks. A lot of cutting, a lot of mortaring, yeah, a lot could, of yeah. PVC to get those kind of arches and those unique shapes. Uh, the next type is dry uh, artificial rock. The pros here, again, no pest, no algae, doesn't come from the ocean, but the cons is not a lot of variety of shapes, just like the live rock. Um, color is not as desirable typically, so you're going to take a long time to get a color that looks right off the bat, will not that look as pretty. Yeah. Um, and there's also no bacteria, so the cycle could be longer, harder to get the rock seeded with mm -hmm. bacteria, not as much beneficial bacteria to get your tank started. So again, longer, everything's going to take longer. Yeah. I mean, and all any of these choices are perfectly fine to use. Just know your kind of pros and cons to it. Um, we choose Carib Sea Life Rock and then the Carib Sea Fiji Pink um, yeah. on this build. And pretty much all of our builds, that's the way we go with them. Um, and it's been a great thing. Everything stabilizes really, really well. And I just like the natural yeah. purple color from the very beginning. Yeah, it's good so. stuff. We did the homework for you. So if you're looking for a, a really good way to, a good sand, a good mm -hmm. rock, and easy aquascaping, yep. that's the way to go. All right, we have a bonus word, bonus word I think we should drop before we let them see this aquarium live. Yes, we do. All right, so this uh, bonus word is going to get your extra entries into the giveaway. It is a bonus for watching live. Yes, so the bonus word, bonus entry code for today, which you're going to hop over to the website, waterboxaquariums.com forward slash huge and enter I love waterbox. If you love waterbox also, put it in That's the comments. That's right, you do. <laughs> <laughs> put it in the comments if you love waterbox also. We love waterbox. All right, I was about to just throw everything way up there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's your bonus yeah. word. We're going to go um, Good luck check out the, comments. the um, aquascaping. Kina's going to get some close ups in there uh, so you can see it like that while you guys blow up our comments with I love waterbox. <laughs> and. Uh, do you want to turn the lights on in there? No, yeah. we're going to turn the overhead lights on. Okay. Yeah, because there's less, it's easier for the camera. Gotcha. All right, so Keenan is going to walk on over there and give you a nice up close. So again, if you guys, there we go. bonus entry word, I love water box, head over, put that in. If you didn't get the other ones, check back on the previous four weeks and get that bonus entry code from those videos. All right, so we're starting here at the left side, which is the 36 mega arch. Uses some shelf and original pieces to kind of prop that arch up. And then some of the 12 inch caves to bring some height, as we call it, the flying man, like you guys yeah. know, the top guy, um, around to the side of it. It's got some nice cave swim throughs as well. And then I used some pieces behind this arch just to break it up so it wasn't just one clear shot. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more space backwards to put some coral on there as well. And look at that surface area for coral. Yeah, it's great. So I love the cave. It's, it's, the arch gives a lot of space. Tons of corals can be placed and they're going to grow out really nicely. In that front area, I can see some like um, plating maniapores or something that kind of played out some chalices over mm -hmm. into the um, open space here. And there's plenty of sand bed. So, um, you know, room for hopefully clams or, yes. and, you know, like yes. some um, mosophilias and all those kinds of things. Going over there, you can see in between those two arches is a nice swim through um, area with some more caves and some tunnels. So that there's main thing is plenty of swimming space, but also enough space that fish can feel comfortable and hide, but not always be out of view. Mm -hmm. When you do those walls of rock, like unless the fish decides to come all the way out in front of your wall of rock, you never see them. Um, you know, mm -hmm. there's not a lot as much open swim space for the actual fish. I love, one of the things I love about this scape and, and most of the scapes 
that you do these days is, I guess, the best thing to call it. I think I've heard people call it like negative space. It's basically just like the empty space in the tank. There's a lot of it. It looks really good, but there's still so much real estate for yeah. corals to go in. Yeah, I mean, you got to have plenty of space for your fish. And you can see no rock touches glass on this whole scape. So mm -hmm. we can fully clean the back glass, the overflow, glass overflow box, plenty of circle swimming space for the fish. Yeah. And that's really important if you're thinking of tangs and antheus and stuff like that, because they do need a lot of swim space yep. to feel happy and comfortable. We've got some little caves in there. Um, <laughs> and Keenan's <laughs> saying, Keenan hi! The reflection. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're working on the reflections. It's very hard to film aquariums, believe it or not. And especially they empty. Them. Well, when they're empty, yeah, you don't have Yeah, if there's no on. water in it, it's worse. Um, I know this is optophic, Jess. I don't know if we're going to cover it, the plumbing that we did. Um, can he show that real quick? He can, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know episode. if we're going back. It is? Kind of, but okay. not right. really. All no, right. go ahead. You want me to show it? Yeah, so. yeah, I just want to mention, because it's a, it's a really cool feature on the Reef LX that doesn't come with other ones. We did hard plumb this system here. So uh, we, we went a little fancy with some colored pipe. We plumbed in the Vectra L2. We just completed that. I wanted to mention it just because it's mm -hmm. important for you guys to know that you can use the soft pipe that we give you. But oh, yeah. This has been requested a lot, and there's a fitting that comes. It's a standard U.S. fitting, so you can adapt one-inch pipe right into it. Yeah, yeah, it makes it very easy, and then lets you kind of customize um, however you want to do your return pump. So we chose to brighten it up with a little bit of water box blue pipe in yeah. there. Looks and the whole nice. thing can come apart. There's a union by the pump, and there's a union up top. So if you want to take your whole plumbing off, boom, done. Yeah, and you do this method, you can always plumb in, um, you know, manifold and stuff like that. Yeah. So we don't, at this point, see us needing to use any other equipment that isn't already kind of there. So uh, we didn't put the manifold in on this yeah. setup. So All pretty right. cool. I had to show that because, again, I don't know when we're going to touch on it. I just think it's important for them to know early on that that is an option with the Reef LX. Because yes. with these big tanks, a lot of times you want to customize all those things. You don't want to use the soft plumbing or yeah. anything like that. So yeah. um, that gives you a really easy option versus having to like, buy a whole new everything part of it. Yeah. So. Yep, so there you have it. Wow. Amazing job, Jess. Thank Again. You guys. I'm glad everyone likes it. If that. I did that aquascape, I guarantee you it would not look anything like that. <laughs> I'd leave it to the professional. It <laughs> is a, I mean, yeah, so I have aquascape tanks and customers' tanks and stuff like that for, I don't know, 15 plus years. I'm dating yeah. myself. But <laughs> um, it just it's just kind of an acquired thing over time. But just take your time with it, change it. I mean, that one right there, and it didn't, didn't show the video, but that was putting a piece in there, taking three pieces off, going back to it, and then yeah. like one piece change, and like just spending a lot of time back and forth. How much time do you think you spent in the, in the entirety to get that put together? Keenan? Maybe like four hours. Four hours? Maybe like four hours to finalize it. Yeah. So It was great. She was sitting there in a chair, looking at it like she was doing a painting. I had a rolling chair, yeah. so I'd slide to the other side <laughs> and then slide over. And I'm like, nope, don't like that. End up changing everything. So Great tip, though, what she did is when you get your water box, save the top of the crate. Yeah. <clears throat> it's very close to the footprint of the aquarium. So you can, you can mock up your it. scape. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can mock up your scape and make sure that there's no rock touching the glass. It's a nice stable surface. Yeah. Just mark off where you want it to be, how much space you want away from uh, the sides and the front, and it lets you work and know how you're going to be able to make it. And also height-wise, keep an eye on your height as yes. well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So I think that's questions. Cool, cool. If you guys haven't already, smash that like button. If you like what we're doing, smash the like button. It is a requirement by Jess for you to uh, smash it. You'll so. never see my scape again. Paul, no, says, <laughs> Paul says thoughts on adding dry rock, dry rock to establish tank. Mm, I mean, you can in small quantities. Just know that um, dry rock is going to grow and promote algae growth on it more, not good algae growth, bad algae growth, more than like a, um, a life rock or a live rock. So you add your dry rock in there and you're probably going to see more algae issues pop up on that one set rock than anything. And you just don't want to do too much at a time because it will throw off the um, imbalance of bacteria and stuff in your aquarium. Yeah. So, um, you know, adding like something like a carob sea life rock because it has bacteria seeded on it is a story, but like just plain white dry rock, just be cautious. Yeah. All right, Ryan says, do you need to use sand? Well, that's a big old debate. Um, do you have to? No. Do I think it's better? Yes. And there'll be people that'll tell me it's not. But 
if you're doing a super, I mean, like ridiculously high flow, full SPS system, uh, a lot of times you can't use sand because it's just going to blow all over the place. You have so much flow. That's a pretty small segment of the hobby, I think, that right. needs that. And I've done SPS tanks with high flow and I've still used sand. I've done bare bottom as well. And I just, I changed back. I just don't like the look of it. Uh, your tank is more stable when you have sand. Yeah. Andor says, what is the best grain size for gobies? Uh, I think something like the Fiji Pink is perfect because it's got some little bit bigger pieces, but it's not too big that they can't put it through their gills without issue. Um, but you know, you, you can also go with the very fine, but they're going to kick it up a lot. Yeah. Fiji Pink all the way. Yeah, if you guys are debating sand, Fiji Pink is, I mean, it's the it's easy, meet all your needs. safe answer. That's gonna, yeah, it's going to meet all your needs. Gabriel says, would you guys recommend an island for more pest corals? Yeah, I mean, you definitely can make little um, spots, and you might even see it in this, is we got a lot of open space, so we could take one of the, like the cave pieces or mm -hmm. even like an arch or something um, and put something that we consider might overtake too much, clove polyps or something, and just make that spot for them. Or, yeah, you could take one of these whole things, and it's all your just heavily growing soft corals and let them just yeah. have at it and then have your other side kind of separate. But things like Xenia and clove polyps and stuff, if you don't want them growing to their desire, you do want to keep them isolated to some way. Cool. Don says, how much sand did it take? We use 10 bags. 10 bags, yeah. yeah. So, and we don't want it really thick. It's well, probably an inch or so mm -hmm. sand bed. Um, you know, it depends on if you want to go any deeper than that, but I, I keep it right on one yeah, inch so usually. so it's 200 pounds, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of sand. <laughs> Throwing um, those boxes around wasn't very fun. No, no, I made him do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oliver says, so do you all worry about bacteria die off since you aren't adding water just yet? So once the sand went in, I did cover the sand in water, and it is going to be filling shortly after. Yeah. So um, we're, it's only a, a, about a day that it'll probably be without um, running water, but it's got it's, it's completely fully submerged. it's fully submerged in salt water at the moment, yeah. so that we don't have die off. Yeah. Steven says, "How big of a cleanup crew are you going to need for the a tank this size?" Huge. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, like the, the URL yeah. says. So go, it's huge. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It, it, it's not all going to go in at one time, and it really depends on the fish we put in there. Some fish are going to be very helpful in cleaning up, and you know it's going to be really depend on how much light are we running, how well are we keeping everything clean, you know how much algae do you really have. So we're just going to tailor it as we go. But even just the initial snails and crabs is going to be a pretty big amount. Just yeah. it's a big tank. Everything's more. Yeah, everything's bigger. Everything's. But I can't tell you exactly what we're adding. I don't know, probably start with like 20 snails, 30, 50 hermits, something like that, just to start with it. Yeah, it's always something that you're going to be adding on and changing and modifying as the yeah. tank matures. Rob says, if you run out of room to place coral, can you buy an artificial rock that attaches to the side with a magnet, or is that a bad idea? Um, I've seen it. I don't know if the artificial rocks are that large. It's going to gain you too much space, but I've definitely seen them. Um, you know, people put up frag racks and stuff like that on the sides. And, you know, you can definitely adjust your scape as you go mm -hmm. to create some more layers and spots or, you know, that as, as you do it. But I just don't know how big of a piece of rock you're going to get that's held by magnets on the glass. I don't think that much. Yeah, and if you run out of room to place coral, you get especially, a yeah, especially <laughs> growing coral, if like, the corals have overgrown, <laughs> might be time to upgrade. It might be time. A lot of our customers have multiple tanks. Yeah, yeah. So. Get a frag tank to go and take your frags, and then get a bigger tank yeah. and grow them there. Yep. So, who did the last one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Steven says, do you need a refugium for a tank that big or no? Well, isn't Highly that what everyone wants to know? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, there's no... A refugium is never a must-have. Yeah. I think it is an addition to your... Um, your equipment and nutrient control, stuff like that. It's gonna help with live food. Um, are we putting a refugium in this tank? It's still for debate. I think we will, just because everyone keeps asking to see um, a refugium done on one of our builds, because we usually don't run them. Yeah. I personally, on most of them, do not run them, because they are a lot of extra work, and I feel with heavy duty equipment, 
and being smart with your feeding and your maintenance that yeah. you don't have nutrient issues necessarily. Yep. Again, I've, I've done, I've tried it both ways and I, I personally tend to lean towards not having it. Like you said, just yep. because of the maintenance aspect. If you're- but I think on this one, we're gonna go all out. Yeah. You got the huge Quantum 300 skimmer in there. You still got room for refugium. Yeah. I had the divider plate in there, so it's just kind of like gonna guide me to put a refugium <laughs> into it. So uh, stay tuned to find out. Yeah. All right, so that is all for the questions. It is now time for the winner of a $100 gift card for someone who's been active talking in here um, yeah. and been watching for the whole episode. And winner Hello. is... Hello. Gabrielle Gastelum, congratulations, my friend. Uh, email winners at waterboxaquariums.com and they'll get you hooked up. Congratulations. Every um, episode. You do that every week, yep. Yep, every episode you got a chance to win a $100 gift card, bonus words, all that good stuff. Next week is how to you know the process of making pristine homemade salt water and filling this bad boy. Yeah, so we're going to get water in this thing finally. Yes, so <laughs> stay tuned for that.